Welcome to Worship at Christ Church. We are living into our mission of building inclusive community, sharing Christ's transforming love. We celebrate that the Spirit of God can still bring us together spiritually as a church family. We pray that you feel the presence of God in a real way all throughout this service today. Are you new to Christ Church? Get better connected to this community of faith by texting hello to the number you see on your screen to receive a welcome message from our pastor and connections team. If you haven't already done so, please go to our website at ChristUMC.net. Once you're there, you can submit your prayer requests, learn more about our secure giving opportunities, or register your attendance if you are worshiping online. Do you have a child or a youth that's not connected to the church yet? Visit the Christ Kids and Christ Youth pages on our website to learn more about these ministries and how they are still staying active and engaging. We want to thank you for worshiping with us today. Wherever we are physically, we celebrate that we are together as Christ Church.
shining like the day King of heaven comes. Thank you for joining us in worship today. We are so grateful for all the ways that God is leading us at Christ Church to connect, grow, and give. Thank you to each and every one of you who are faithfully mailing your tithes and offerings into the church or continue to give as part of our secure online giving platform. You are making a difference. For those of you that would like to start giving, you can access our online giving by visiting our church website at christumc.net slash giving. I would also like to give you an update on our Stewardship 2021 pledge campaign. If you have already turned in your pledge card, thank you. We are so grateful for the commitment that you have made to the ongoing ministries of Christ Church. After the initial count, we have received $910,000 towards our 2021 budget, which is awesome. But we do have a little bit of work to still do. If you have not yet turned in your pledge card, you can do so by going online at ChristUMC.net slash pledge2021 and filling it out, or you can mail back the pledge card that you received in the mail, or you can drop it off at the church office between the hours of 9 and 4, Monday through Friday. Remember, we use the pledge number to help determine our budget for 2021. Your faithful support of Christ Church is meeting the needs and changing lives of individuals and families throughout the church and our community and our city. Remember, everything we have is a gift from God. We ask that God would continue to bless and multiply all of our gifts for the work that needs done in this community and around the world. The lighting of our Advent wreath is a wonderful tradition that we share every year during worship, each week of Advent. This year, as with so many of our other familiar practices and traditions, lighting the Advent candles in worship will look a little different. However, just like so many of the other shifts that have been made in the ministry of Christ Church, we know God is still at work and moving in new ways. In just a few moments, we are going to be blessed by Sue and Howard Irwin leading us in our Advent candle lighting. Since we are not able to all join together in experiencing the warmth and the light of this candle of love in person, we would like to encourage you to join together in this special tradition in your own home each week of Advent by lighting a candle together with us during worship. You can light your own family's Advent wreath. You can light a simple single candle or a tea light. Really, whatever you have will work perfectly. This is an opportunity for us to join together in this act of worship, even while we're all worshiping apart. Throughout the history of the church, we've lit candles in our worship as a symbol of the presence of the Holy Spirit, just like in the flames of Pentecost. As we live into this new season in the life of our church, we would invite you to join together with us in this new and special way of sharing in the, in the lighting of our Advent candles. We light the first Advent candle, the candle of hope. It is our hope that God is always with us, even in the darkness. The second candle of Advent is the candle of love. The greatest of these is love, writes Paul, and few of us would disagree. At the deepest level of our being it is surely our longing for love and our elemental need to, be lo to love and to be loved. With this flame, we signify the love of God that surrounds and fills us at all times, a love we recognize in a special way at this Christmas time. There is no greater power than love. It is stronger than rulers and empires, stronger than grief or despair, stronger than even death. Trust in God's unfailing love, a love that moved him to send a savior from heaven to restore and rescue us. We love because God first loves us. God shines the light of love through Jesus into our world. Would you pray with me, please? Dear God, as we light these candles, we thank you for providing us hope and love in this world through your son, Jesus. May we know your love and show it in the way we live our lives. Make room for love in our lives, in our hearts, and in our world. Amen. As we enter into this time of prayer together, I'd remind you that if you have prayer concerns or situations in your life that you would like lifted up in prayer by our intercessory prayer team, you can submit those concerns on the church website, christumc.net, 
or by calling the church office. Please, won't you join with me in our prayer today? Holy and loving God, as we gather for this time of worship, we remember and raise to you the prayers and concerns of this congregation. We entrust all of these into your loving and capable hands, God. In this season of separation and distance, we remember those in our congregation and community who feel alone and lonely. Help us to connect with each other in all the ways that you have equipped us to. Help us to hold each other in prayer and empower us to reach out to one another. God, we thank you for all the ways you surround us with your care. We also continue to recognize everyone around us facing the reality of the COVID pandemic. Frontline and healthcare workers, so many recovering in hospitals, and those in our community who mourn the loss of loved ones. God, we pray for your presence in all these situations. In this time of Advent and preparation, we ask that you continue to work in our hearts, God. Continue to shape us in preparation to receive and celebrate the glorious and wonderful, yet humble and intimate entrance of Jesus into this world and into our lives. God, we know that you are the God of the whole universe and yet also the Lord of each and every one of our lives. In this season of Advent, you are speaking your love into each and every heart. As we all continue to prepare outwardly, help us to also prepare our hearts inwardly and allow the transformation of the world that happened in the birth of Christ to be a transformation of our heart and the hearts of everyone we meet by the way we shine your light and love into the world. God, we pray all this in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray when we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One star burns in the darkness, shines with the promise of man you will. One child born in the stillness, living within us, man you we're singing glory, glory, let there be peace, let there be peace. Singing glory, glory, let there be peace, let it start in me. One voice speaks for the
I am so happy. Advent is my favorite time on the liturgical calendar. Oops. That seminary and pastor talk for the weeks leading up to Christmas Eve on the Christian calendar. We await the arrival of the most notable person in both space and time, really in everything, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As the weeks of Advent speed by, we continue to prepare for the birth of baby Jesus. Our Advent series is called Lighten Up as we anticipate the birth of Christ, the light of the world. Lighten Up also means we continue to light Advent candles each week leading up to celebrating on Christmas Eve as is true every year. For me, these candles trace the coming of Jesus' birth in a celebratory way. Anticipating the light of the world never gets old for me, never ever. It's just so exciting. Now, who said lighten up? But well, I did. Though I am excited about Advent and Christmas, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around light, lightening up with all the crazy these days. Looking back to just a week ago, a whole lot of people experienced Thanksgiving, like Santa leaving huge lumps of coal in Christmas stockings. For many, the holiday meant separating from loved ones, including family and friends, while eating in smaller groups or alone. And remember the good old days when we all had to worry about was preparing for Christmas dinner, buying gifts for loved ones, and arguing with crazy Uncle Edgar while eating a plate of turkey? On top of the usual hectic preparations and family disagreements of Christmas, we are in a pandemic experiencing death, shocking rates of unemployment, rocketing levels of alcohol and drug abuse, a slump in retail sales and food lines. And that's the short list. Many are sad because the December 25th family gathering that included Uncle Edgar has already been scheduled on Zoom with the link emailed the day after Thanksgiving. I know, already. We'd rather give those presents, eat those great meals in person, and argue with that uncle in person. What light? Do you see a light? Okay, so lightening up doesn't mean we are denying reality really rough times these days. We can look at lightening up on a spiritual level, even when life on a physical plane is a mess. As Pastor Chris said last week, first we need to prepare to literally let the light of the world, Jesus, into our life. Second, we need to strive to release all that stuff that is weighing us down, which will allow us to feel lighter as we cast our cares on Christ. Lightening up is about Jesus, and by the time we are done today, hopefully many of us will begin to continue to lean on the love of God and Jesus in these hard times, for some made challenging by Christmas in the age of COVID-19. And that's where What's Love Got to Do With It, the classic Tina Turner song from 1993 comes in. Let's listen to the Christ Church Band's cover of What's Love Got to Do With It as we imagine Tina Turner's fabulous spiky wig and one of her amazing dance moves. Well, you know that she taught Mick Jagger how to dance.
So as we continue to hum along with Tina in our heads, think about this question. What's love got to do with it? As I share the message today, my prayer is that God speaks through me. Now to the text. On the second Sunday of Advent, may these sacred, sacred words from Scripture in Luke 1, 26, 38, fill everyone's minds and spirits as we prepare for today's message. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have, been fa you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. May God bless the reading of the word. The passage in the New Revised Version of the Bible is called The Birth of Jesus Foretold. Foretelling or letting people know, some, know somebody is coming is part of preparing the way, the title of the last week's Advent message. As is true of Middle Eastern culture, the context of Mary's story, the preparation for Jesus' arrival is based in hospitality where we and even those in the past lovingly and joyfully awaited his arrival. We love someone, so we prepare, right? As we prepare for Christmas Eve, consider what's love got to do with it. The title of today's message. The title, particularly the word love, is central to this scripture passage. Later, we will unpack three love story stories. Mary and Elizabeth, Mary and the angel, Gabriel. He's got a name in other versions of the Bible. God and the world. Before we enter the wonders of true love from Christian perspectives, let's step back a bit, bit considering another sort of love. There's all sorts of love, all of which is included in the Bible. There's this eros, that sensual, passionate kind of love that we see in the book of Song of Solomon or Song of Songs in the Bible. Passion for another person is all over the Old Testament, and that's okay. There's Rebecca and Isaac, Sarah and Abram, and many others who had passion for one another in healthy ways. So there is a place for Eros, a passionate love. What's love not got to do with it gives us a comparison for what is really, truly love. I'm not sorry for my poor grandma. Now, there's Eros going very wrong, different from Sarah and Abraham's love, different from God's and Jesus' love. Now, stay with me. Have you ever seen the play Hamilton, either pre-COVID on Broadway or right here in our beloved downtown Pittsburgh in the Cultural District? If you miss seeing it in person, stream on Disney Plus or YouTube. Imagine the opening scene on the cusp of the American Revolution. King Richard III belts out the first notes of Hamilton with the song, You'll Be Back. 
What struck me was the king's interpretation of love in two layers. In the first layer, he's talking about his love for his subjects in the American colonies. Hmm, we know how that worked out. And in the second layer, he sounds like a bad boyfriend where Eros has gone terribly wrong. Hmm, we know how that works out too. The king sings, Oceans rise, empires fall. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. You say our love is draining and you can't go on. You'll be the one complaining when I'm gone. For your love, for your praise, and I'll love you till my dying days. When you're gone, I'll go mad. So don't throw away this thing we had. Because when push comes to shove, I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. After finishing the song, King Richard III turns and walks away quickly, flicking a hand to have a colonist killed. Da 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 That's part of You'll Be Mine, and that's my favorite part. Now, Tina Turner's words to her song echoes the King's lyrics. What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it. What's love but a secondhand emotion? What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it. Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Got a broken heart? You can unbreak your heart. Well, not literally. How? Follow your heart. Follow the path to God's true love. God loved us when he gave us Jesus, his son, to the world. God's love gives us the mental, emotional, and spiritual space to lighten up and express and act on being loving through words and actions. Let us be filled with that love as we continue to prepare the way for the birth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. What's love got to do with it? I love my sweater. I love Jingle Jangle on Netflix. The word love is used so lightly that it has almost lost its meaning. There is something deeper than the casual use of the word love, even when Tina Turner uses it, singing her heart and soul out. We can experience that deeper meaning through Advent, Christmas, and beyond our, in our Christian lives. Now, some backdrop. In the past, I've talked about how the early Christians were steeped in Greco-Roman culture and society. Sculptures of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, were common. For the Romans, the goddess was Venus. So it makes sense that the early Christians' understanding of love was based in Greek language and Roman experience. I already mentioned Eros, a sensual love, in reference to the bad English king. There is more. We also have philia and storge. These are types of love that start to bring us closer to the deepest love of all, God's and Jesus' love. Now, Pope Francis, the head of the Catholic Church and the Bishop of Rome, shared a story about philia, sisterly or brotherly love. In Argentina on August 13, 1957, before he became Pope, he was taken to the hospital with the worst kind of flu, a killer flu actually. Sounds a little familiar with what's going on now. The hospital staff drew 1.5 liters of water from his lungs and it looked like he was a goner. A Dominican sister or nun who was a ward matron, not a doctor or nurse, stepped in and told the nurses to give him a double dose of antibiotics that saved the future Pope's life. She loved him so much, one human to another, that even though she wasn't a doctor or nurse, she was a friend in Christ 
who stepped up and saved his life. Now, pivoting from the Pope story to scripture, there are many love stories of deep friendship adding to that to that family ties. One example is Mary and Elizabeth, who shared both philia, again, friendship and storge, familial types of love. Reading further along in Luke, Mary was quick to reach out to Elizabeth. Mary now knew she was pregnant and wanted to spend time with someone bound to her in philia or friendship and strongly tied through storge, which is a family or relative. The connection was deepened when Elizabeth's baby, who would be the prophet John the Baptist, the herald of Christ's ministry years later, leapt in her stomach when Mary and the unborn Jesus entered the room. In our world, when girlfriends, particularly best friends, are both going to have babies around the same time, they lovingly support one another through the pregnancies. This is certainly the same in any era, any time. That friendship was deepened for Mary and Elizabeth because they were blood. Theirs was a storge type of love. Elizabeth thought so much of Mary as friend and family showing honor in Luke 144. For blessed is she, that would be Mary, who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Finally, the two women were tight friends or companions and family because Mary stayed three months with Elizabeth. Not everybody can or will do that. That's a special kind of love. So quick review of the many ways to love as we move to the greatest love of all. There's a messy Eros romantic love by King Richard III forced on the American colonists. There's philia or the love of friendship described by Pope Francis, one human to another. The philia and storge love of both friendships and family respectively between Mary and Elizabeth. Philia and Storge are amazing, profound ways to love, but there is a greater, even deeper love drawn from Advent. That's what love's got to do with it. During this holy time of Advent, I remembered one of the first scriptures I ever memorized as a child. It was John 3.16, which I learned in the King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is agape, unconditional love. This is a love that has no measure. Such love is endless and has no height or width. Such a love is not limited to the length of a tape measure. Such a love cannot be bounded by international borders. Such a love cannot be held in a container. And though Eros, Filio, Philia, and Storge are central to our everyday human lives and can be healthy ways of loving, Agape is a cosmic, unconditional love, a love that is huge. That is the love of God and Jesus for all of us. And when we remember this love during Advent, Christmas, and the entire year, God's agape love for us can be traced throughout Luke 1, 26, 38. God loved Mary so much that God sent the angel Gabriel to share the news that a virgin, that would be Mary, would conceive Jesus. Look, God could have supernaturally gotten Mary pregnant and left her to her own devices. Instead, God gave loving support. Can you imagine? The angel, a manifestation of God's truest love and support to Mary, said in verses 3 to 31, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and will name him Jesus. 
God sent an angel to Mary with the good news and more importantly, gave the world God's only son. Getting ahead of ourselves in the story, Jesus grew into a man and ultimately sacrificed himself to save us that we might live. Can anyone listening imagine sacrificing someone to the world for others? A mother, a father, a daughter, a son, a best friend? I couldn't even sacrifice a friend of me. But God did that for us. What's love got to do with it? The love of Christ. As we meditate on God's love for us, we strive for an agape love, a selfless love in our lives while experiencing all of the other types of love, eros, philia, and storge. Striving for agape, we are certainly not Jesus, but we are called to devote our lives to trying to be like Jesus. The story of the Dominican matron who saved the Pope is a filia, friend's love, but she was also striving for a selfless agape love mm. like Jesus by serving. Fast forwarding to here and now, show people empathy during the pandemic, even when you are suffering. Strive for a selfless love towards others. Ask someone how they are doing in the middle of this mess or for help. Continuing to serve others selflessly is an agape love. Ask how you can volunteer and connect with so many in need, doing so even remotely. Here's a concrete example. One of my friends ran into a homeless person asking for money. He did not have a mask on. My friend went to her car and grabbed several masks for him and then got a bag of food for him at McDonald's. She walked up to the man and gave him the mass and food, expecting nothing in return. That's driving to be like Christ. That's agape love. As we close, we can do similar things in our own lives. There are points of intersection in many moments in our days when we can show agape love, the love of Christ. We can do so during Advent and throughout the year. Wait for those moments. Search for those moments. And if you don't remember anything else I say today, remember the agape love of God and Jesus. Strive to share the same selfless love. Remember the greatest love of all is not the eros of Taylor Swift's song, Cardigan, the philia of Dionne Warwick's, that's, the, that's what friends are for. The storge of Sister Sledge's, we are family. The greatest love of all is agape. God's unconditional, absolute love for us, sacrificing God's son that we might live. Ain't that grand? Now looking at the screen, join with me as we pray together a bit of a paraphrase and mashup of John 13, 34, 35. Almighty God, help us to love each other. God, you loved us, so we must love one another. Loving one another helps us to understand we are followers of Christ, called to strive for agape, a selfless love during Advent, and the rest of our lives. Amen. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, let us adore Him. 
We again want to thank all of you that have taken the time to mail your offering to the church or started or continue to give as part of our secure online giving. Your generosity allows Christ Church to continue to do ministry in new and unique ways every single day. Also, please be sure to go to our homepage at ChristUMC.net and sign in using the attendance button. And while you're there, please make sure to click on the prayer button and the give button and use those as well. And again, if you've not yet returned your pledge card for Stewardship 2021, please prayerfully do so as soon as possible. You can find more information about how to submit your pledge online at ChristUMC.net slash pledge 2021. Thank you for all the ways that you've continued to live out your faith as together we continue building inclusive community, sharing Christ's transforming love. Join me in this affirmation of faith. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord. To that end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. In this time of Advent, I encourage everyone to strive to share the agape love of Jesus and God. I ask all of you to find those moments in the day when you can serve and help others. May God bless you with the love of agape and may you bless others. Jesus, born to set thy 
Baby 